In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the current conditions, diving into the tropical activity as we're going to have that Florida impact. And then we're going to be breaking down the severe weather as well. Get straight into things though. And first things first, we're taking a look here at our current radar imagery. We do have some showery activity up here in the northwestern corner of the nation. Also some showers going on up here for the northeastern corner as well with some pretty darn strong thunderstorms down there for the south central United States. Actually some pretty... Uh, strong storms, some uh, pretty heavy showers as well. I think flooding would be a big concern in there as we're seeing pretty large areas of oranges and yellows, and obviously that has uh, serious implications with it. So let's just move up into the northwest real quickly. Uh, and as you can see, we have these lighter showers just moving across the region kind of like this, uh, just moving across the area there. So we're seeing these spots see some spotty activity with some minor showers so you might see a sprinkle or two pass by uh, throughout the morning and around the noon time maybe even the afternoon today with this we are seeing a bit of snowfall here for some of the rockies some of these mountains in here are some of the tallest in the entire rocky mountain mountain range um, oftentimes these mountains in here from uh, montana into wyoming are some of the first to see snowfall in the fall time and the last to see snowfall in the springtime. Um, also for Colorado, we see a lot of those taller ones as well. Now let's move down to the south central United States where we have these more major showers and thunderstorms ongoing. Even some of these in here are looking like some spotty, stronger thunderstorms. But it's mostly this large area of, of thunderstorm activity and heavy shower activity that I'm concerned about because we're seeing just those very persistent yellows and oranges even into reds for this spot. Um, so flooding is a major concern and probably multiple inches of rainfall are happening for the areas that are seeing, you know, long periods of this heavier rainfall in there. Uh, we also have some spotty thunderstorms happening here in Arkansas into northern Mississippi there, uh, even into southern uh, Tennessee, probably getting impacted by some of these as well. Now, as we move up further northeast in the United States, we could see showers and potentially thunderstorms here on the southern end. Uh, but mostly for these northern regions, it's showers, more minor to moderate showers in here. We're seeing these pass through the region. It's actually going to be pretty stormy uh, for the eastern seaboard today, but we'll take a look at that on the Storm Prediction Center where uh, a lot of these areas could see some thunderstorms. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to dive into the modeled guidance. All right, now here we are taking a look at the simulated radar. As we can see, a lot of this storminess, like I said, is going to move into the eastern United States and even down into the Gulf states here with some of these thunderstorms and thunderstorm activity. Mid-Atlantic down through the southeast, even into the deep south, we're going to be seeing this activity throughout the day today uh, on June 2nd. That's going to be Thursday, June 2nd. Uh, and for Friday, June 3rd, we can see a lot of this activity is pretty suppressed here for the southeast coast and the deep south coast. We can see that tropical system approaching Florida as well here on Friday, June 3rd. We have a lot to go over with that as well. Uh, some pretty big updates, some storminess spreading into a lot of these spots in here on June 5th. Let's just keep going with this. Uh, by the time I reach about June 6th, it's going to be Monday, we see a lot of this storminess trying to spread towards the eastern United States. So we're going to be watching for this. Let's keep going. Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon time frame, we see these areas here seeing some thunderstorm and shower activity potentially. Uh, so that's going to be Tuesday, June 7th. Uh, and then from this point on, we see just some of this activity spreading from west to east throughout these areas for a couple of days, it looks like. Um, so you look at that, we see multiple rounds of just storminess heading through this region. We're in a pretty persistent jet stream pattern, so I think that's what's happening here. So as the jet does this, we see the storms ride along this jet just like this. So I'm going to just rewind. So watch this play out. You'll notice that the storms are moving around that motion that I just drew there. That's because we get stuck in a jet stream pattern, which is kind of a ridge out here in the west. And then a trough here in the east. So the flow is about like this for quite a while. Then by the time we reach about Thursday, June 9th, we're going to watch and see as this pattern kind of tries to lift off towards the end of the model run. And we get a much more flat jet stream. I'm, I'm predicting that what's going to end up happening is we will see a trough return to the west here. And the ridge will try to build back into the east around the midpoint of June. So around June 10th through 20th, 
Sometime in between there, we're going to see this flip back for a little while. Uh, that's fairly typical uh, from what we've been seeing in, in the pattern overall. Let's take a look at the total rainfall through the next 10 days. As you can see, a lot of that precipitation does occur here within this region where we see, again, the persistent storminess moving from west to east through there. So that is pretty strong evidence that we're going to see a lot of storminess. Also, the tropical system has trended a little bit further south and further east east with the track which is really good news that means minimal impacts for the east coast if we can keep the storm looking like this um southern florida will be the only area to get directly impacted if we see this solution play out there is still time for a little bit of a north trend to occur which would lead towards more impacts for the eastern seaboard but for now the trend has been further south and further east which is really what we want to see so that is super good news if you're anywhere in the whites you're expecting practically no precipitation over the next 10 days Grays will be 0.1 inches or less of rainfall. Greens will be 0.1 to 0.5 inches of rainfall. Blues will be 0.5 to an inch of rainfall. Yellows will be an inch to two inches. Reds will be two to five inches. And then your browns will be five to 10 inches of rainfall. So we see some of that happen with that tropical activity down there in Florida uh, and some other areas around the United States. We see some of those five inch plus amounts, uh, which is pretty significant. For the total snowfall, look at this, guys. Next 10 days, this is the, the snowfall expected, even less than yesterday. For anywhere in the grays, you're expecting a dusting of anything. For anywhere in the blues, you're expecting two to six inches of snowfall, which that's the maximum we see in the United States there is the blues for the Rockies. So really minimal amounts of snowfall left to occur. If you're anywhere in the purples up there in Canada, you're expecting six to 10 inches of snowfall, and then your pinks will be 10 to 20, uh, but I don't see any pastels. So that's the highest we go here through June 12th, and I imagine that after June 12th, we won't see even nearly this much at all. So we are really winding down the snowfall for this previous season. All right, now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna move on and we're gonna take a look at the upcoming temperature pattern. All right, now here we are, here we are taking a look here at our upcoming temperature pattern. As you can see, we have warmer temperatures down here for the Southeast that is looking to come to an end um, as colder temperatures kind of just trend in for the eastern United States by the time we're reaching late this weekend into early next week. We see things start to try to warm back up here by this point. Um, we have a bit of a trough here. So something like this with the jet stream, I think there is some cold air, you know, obviously coming in through here. Uh, and then the warm air is really trying to head towards the east by this point. That looks like what I'm seeing here. Uh, that cold air does eventually trend eastward, though, as you can see, by Friday, June 10th. What we end up seeing happening is that pattern that gets us that storminess pretty persistently. Um, we see cold air moving into here, and then we see the storminess moving along this southern jet like we mentioned on the other map, and then we see the warm air really working its way up into the, the western United States. So we get kind of locked into this jet stream pattern. Um, but as you can see at the end of the, of the model run around 12th, as we're approaching June 12th here, we see cold air trending into the western United States and what this is going to cause to occur is probably the warm air is going to trend eastward here and then we're going to see this cold really dive down that's what we've seen for about the past maybe five months that's the pattern we've been locked into so for quite a while this has been the look and I expect it to continue to be the look now let's talk about some of that tropical activity real quick. Let's track the uh, vorticity here, which is again, this shows us where cyclones and things like that set up. We can see this hits Florida right around the southern half of Florida here. Around Saturday afternoon, we're gonna start to see those impacts. But watch how it's a much further offshore than we originally thought. That stays pretty well offshore there. Uh, it doesn't look to bring any impacts to the East Coast, at least not direct. We can see some stronger winds maybe some waves, but as far as rainfall or very, very strong winds, uh, we're not going to be seeing those kinds of impacts. It does not appear, but anything is possible. So continue to stay up to date because if things do trend northward or westward, we could start to see the, the forecast look like the impacts are really going to increase. For the GFS, it's actually a lot of the same. We see much closer uh, resemblance here. This is just a little bit further south in Florida, and it does track still a little bit further south and further east than the European model there, but it is much closer than it was as of yesterday. Um, so we're seeing these models kind of come together on what they're expecting. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the spaghetti model guidance. So here is our spaghetti models, and as you can see, we have pretty good agreement here. I mean, all the way through this region, it it's not even a cone. It's like a tube like they all stay 
straight. They all know where it's going. Uh, this They could all together, you know, trend northward or southward. You're going to want to just seek official guidance still from the National Hurricane Center uh, because these things can change. But the models do look to have really good agreement here, and it's well offshore of the southeast coast. So Florida looks to be the main area of concern here, in my opinion. Let's go ahead and take a look at the intensity guidance. So here is that model intensity guidance. And as you can see, the models at this point give it about a 50-50 shot of crossing into that tropical storm status. There is some models that keep it below that tropical storm status, which would be in the green. And then we have some models here that take it well into the tropical storm status. And I, I would say it's about 50-50 uh, for becoming a tropical storm. Tropical depression seems much more likely and almost certain that we will at least have tropical depression status. Um, and then tropical storm status, again, is a flip of a coin. But if it's anything like the past few hurricane seasons, my guess is that it will be a tropical storm eventually. But we will only know once it's all said and done, obviously. So we're going to have to wait and see what ends up happening with that. Now, what we're going to do here is move on and take a look at the Atlantic five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. All right, now here we are taking a look at that five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. As you can see, uh, we have a yellow area out here, by the way. I forgot to tell you guys about this, but it has a 0% chance of development. So I didn't feel like it was worth mentioning, but we do have that 0% chance there out ahead of it. Now we have a 9 or an 80% chance of development over the next five days with this one. And it will approach Florida, so we're going to see impacts from this. We also have an 80% chance over the next 48 hours because it basically is expected to impact Florida by the next 48 hours. So development is most likely within this 48-hour uh, chunk. That's what I would say. So we're going to be watching for this. This is a very high percent chance of development here from the Storm Prediction Center. Uh, and we're going to watch this one very, very closely. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at that severe weather. Now, the good news is, is there's not a lot to go over here from the severe weather. Uh, we only have a slight risk at most during the next three days. It doesn't mean to not take it seriously, but we don't have any major severe weather days or severe weather outbreaks expected, which is really, really good news. We have three general thunderstorm risks here popping up in the lighter greens where general thunderstorms are expected, but you're going to want to heat every watch, warning, and advisory, even though no severe weather is expected. It still is always possible. We have two darker green regions there that you can see, and that's where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. That's called our marginal risk areas. And then for our yellow there in the mid-Atlantic, that's our slight risk of severe weather, uh, and that's where we expect scattered severe weather to take place throughout the day today on Thursday, June 2nd. For day two, which is going to be Friday, June 3rd, we have, uh, let's see, two general thunderstorm risks again, uh, one there for New England and then one there horseshoeing around the eastern and even up into the northwestern United States where general thunderstorms are expected, but again, anything is possible, so heat every watch, morning, and advisory. We have three marginal risks of severe weather, one there for just east of the Rockies and then one there for the southeast and one there for southern Florida. This is all where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. Uh, and then the yellow region there for Texas and New Mexico is our slight risk of severe weather, and that is where we expect scattered severe weather to take place tomorrow. And then for day three, finally, for Saturday, June 4th, we have two general thunderstorm risks again, where, again, general thunderstorms are expected, but again, heat every watch, warning, and advisory. And then we have two marginal risks of severe weather, one there for the Plains, and then one there for Southern Florida, where, again, isolated severe weather appears to be possible. Anyway, guys... Thank you so much for watching. For today's confidence tab, we're at a 5 out of 6 because the tropical uh, storm seems to be really, the models seem to have a really good handle on it, and that helps me feel really good about it. Um, I feel like the models are coming into agreement, and I feel really good about what they're showing. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Krates, James Wade, Dove Nagel, Lur the Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, McCullough, Lessa, Catbite, Charles Tennant, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Khaleesi also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.